Finding a good, high-yielding, high-quality dividend stock is not always an easy thing to do. Every stock or ETF I look at, I like to spend a long period of time performing my own due diligence, researching the industry, observing the long-term price performance and dividend distributions, taking a deep dive into the financials of the company, and so on. And it happens pretty frequently that I don't like what I see. There's plenty of high-yielding stocks out there that very slowly over time see a dramatic decline in share price and dividend distributions. In today's video, I want to discuss some high-yielding dividend stocks that I see income and dividend investors talk about all the time that I'm personally not a fan of. I think the outlook for these companies as of the making of this video isn't good, and I think that more share price declines and dividend cuts are also possible going forward with these stocks. After I present each company, I also want to give an alternative investment that I think is better worth considering. I will acknowledge that it is possible to make a capital gain on these investments if you happen to get in at a right time. If you just look at the long-term performance of these stocks, every now and then there are periods where an investor could have bought shares in a stock and still earn a profit if they chose to either sell in the near term or if that person reinvested the dividends, which resulted in them making a positive return. But regardless, I believe that investing in these companies will result in a lot of underperformance if you're even able to turn a profit at all. But I know some people are going to disagree with these picks and I'm going to get people commenting that one of my picks actually made them money, which is great. But I personally wouldn't hold or recommend any of these stocks unless under very specific circumstances. In fact, one of these stocks I'm going to discuss I actually used to be a shareholder of for a while. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The first company I see people talk about all the time that I'm not a fan of is Oxford Square Capital Corporation, ticker symbol OXSQ. They're a BDC that operates as a closed and non-diversified management investment company, and Oxford is a private equity and mezzanine firm that invests in both public and private companies. They invest in secured and unsecured debt, subordinated debt, junior subordinated debt, preferred stock, common stock, and syndicated bank loans. Just looking at the surface, there appears to be a lot of things to like about this stock. Right away you can see that it offers a massive dividend yield of nearly 10%. It's also a very cheap stock at just $4.24 a share, which makes it practically a penny stock almost. Plus this stock pays shareholders monthly dividends and not quarterly, which as I always like to say, monthly is always better than quarterly. It might not make much of a difference in terms of compounding your investment, but it's always much more satisfying to be paid every single month. But once we take a deeper dive into Oxford Square's history, we can begin to see a really few ugly things about this company. For one thing, their stock share price has declined more than 71% since being launched back in January of 2004. It's currently down over 10% within the last year, and it's down over 42% in just the last 5 years. Its dividend history also shows a continuous decline in the amount of dividends that they pay. Oxford Square hasn't increased their dividend since 2012, and it's only gone down since then. In fact, their dividends have almost been cut in half in just the last two years. Looking at a general overview of their investment portfolio reveals some stuff I'm typically not a fan of with BDCs. Oxford Square is a pretty small business development company when compared to others, and it's significantly less diversified than other BDCs. Also, senior secured debt only makes up 62.8% of their investment portfolio, which is much lower than what I typically like to see. I usually like to see senior secured make up at least 80-90% to of a BDC's total portfolio because senior secured debt is always safer. But it's still not entirely risk free since a company can still go bankrupt and not have enough money to pay back their senior secured debt, even when assets are liquidated. In summary, BDCs are one of my top favorite high yielding types of investments. I like them more than mortgage REITs, closed end funds, and master limited partnerships. But Oxford Square is one that I personally don't recommend because I believe there are far better options out there. They're actually not my least favorite stock on this list, but there's still one that I wouldn't feel comfortable recommending. One alternative that I would recommend would be Owl Rock Capital Corporation. It doesn't offer a dividend yield quite as high as Oxford, and it pays dividends quarterly as opposed to monthly, but they do have one of the strongest investment portfolios out there in my opinion. They're also currently undervalued when looking at their balance sheet, which is also nice. The next stock I'd also recommend people avoid is Armour Residential REIT, ticker symbol ARR. Armour invests in residential mortgage-backed securities in the United States. The company's securities portfolio primarily consists of the United States government-sponsored entities, or GSEs, and the Government National Mortgage Association's issued or guaranteed securities. Armour also invests in other securities backed by residential mortgages for which the payment of principal and interest is not guaranteed by a GSE or a government agency. The stock offers a lot of the same things that Oxford offers investors. Again, you can see Armour offers a substantially high dividend yield of over 14%, which is actually one of the highest yielding out of any publicly listed stock on the New York Stock Exchange. Also like Oxford, this company issues dividends to shareholders every single month. Plus it's a very cheap stock at just $8.40 per share, meaning that if you don't have a lot of money to invest, Armour might look more appealing since you can buy more whole shares of them. But now we're going to look at some pretty concerning things about this stock. 
Much like Oxbird, the share price for Armor has dropped pretty significantly. You can see that since being launched in 2007, the stock has lost an incredible 88.44% of its value. Once trading at nearly $80 a share, today it trades at just $8.40 per share. The amount they pay in dividends has decreased almost every year for the past 12 years. In 2011, ARR was paying $0.96 cents per share per month in dividends, whereas today it now only pays $0.10 cents per share, which is a pretty extreme decline over the years. And going further, if we look at their balance sheet, we can see their book value has decreased by nearly half in just the last two and a half years, which is pretty insane. Book value is a really important metric for mortgage REITs since the book value represents how many mortgages the REIT invests in. A decreasing book value means a decreasing number of loans in their investment portfolio, thus meaning they'll have a decrease in revenue. This will also help explain why they've been cutting their dividends so much over the years as we just looked at. In terms of an alternative option for Armor, there really isn't a stock out there I'd recommend that offers a dividend yield of 14%. That's going to be pretty hard to beat. But there are mortgage REITs out there that have much better returns than Armor Residential does. One Emery that does have a long history of success with a nearly 8% dividend yield would be Starwood Property Trust. The stock has a long history of success and its share price has grown by over 53% since their inception back in 2009. The next stock on this list is one that I was formerly a shareholder of years ago, which is Annaly Capital Management, ticker symbol NLY. Annaly is the largest mortgage REIT in the US, and it's also one of the oldest publicly listed M REITs dating back to 1996. Annaly is a diversified capital manager that engages in mortgage finance and corporate middle market lending. The company invests in agency mortgage-backed securities, mortgage servicing rights, agency commercial mortgage-backed securities, and non-agency residential mortgage assets. In my opinion, Annaly isn't as bad as the other stocks we've looked at so far, but this stock is one that's continued to struggle a lot over the last few years. It's a pretty cheap stock at just $7.03 per share, and it also offers a 12.46% dividend yield. As I previously mentioned, Annaly is one of the largest mortgage REITs out there with over $89 billion in total assets, and they've paid over $22 billion in dividends to shareholders since being publicly listed. Their website also claims a 925% total return since their IPO, and running it through a dividend reinvestment calculator, we can see that if you were lucky enough to invest in Annaly back in 1997, you would have made a pretty decent return. And when looking at this stock's chart, we can see that back in the day that Annaly was a significantly better performer. Between 1997 and 2013, their stock stayed between a consistent area, usually between $10 and $20 per share. But starting around 2013, things started to take a turn for Annaly, and their performance hasn't been that good since. In the last 10 years, Annaly's stock price has declined by over 55% and it's dropped almost 20% in just the last year. They also haven't grown their dividend in over a decade either. Like I said, Annaly is probably the best on this list, but I don't see any reason to recommend them at this point, although I do hope better days are ahead for them. Probably my favorite mortgage REIT out there that I'd recommend checking out instead would be Aries Commercial Real Estate Corporation, ticker symbol ACRE. They don't offer the same high dividend yield, but since their IPO in 2013, ACRE has never cut their dividend. It's run by Aries Management, which is a company I've been a big fan of for years, and operate my favorite business development company, which is Aries Capital. Right now, Aries Commercial Real Estate offers an 8.39% dividend yield. One more stock that's really popular that I'm not a fan of is Orchid Island Capital, ticker symbol ORC. Orchid is a specialty finance company that invests in residential mortgage-backed securities and are backed by single-family residential mortgage loans, also known as agency RMBSs. Their portfolio includes traditional pass-through agency RMBSs, such as mortgage pass-through certificates and collateralized mortgage obligations, and structured agency RMBSs comprising interest-only securities, inverse interest-only securities, and principal-only securities. With a 16.62% dividend yield according to Yahoo Finance, it's easy to understand why this stock is so alluring to dividend investors. It offers one of the highest dividend yields possible for a stock, and on top of that, it pays dividends every single month, just like Armour and Oxford Square. It's extremely cheap at just $3.26 a share, and it currently pays shareholders a dividend of 4.5 cents per share per month. That means a $1,000 investment today would have you collecting $13.77 every single month in dividends. But before you invest any money into Orchid Island, you need to see just how much this company has collapsed over the years. Their stock share price has fallen by nearly 78% since their IPO. It once was trading all the way up at $15 per share, whereas now you can see it trades for $3.26 per share. Even if you were to factor in all the dividends you would have collected over time, that still would leave you with a loss. You can see that if you had bought shares when this stock had its IPO, you'd still be down almost 7% if you reinvested dividends. On the bottom, you can see that if you hadn't reinvested your dividends, you would have done much better, having achieved a 0.77% average annual return, which is about the same as a high-yield savings account, not including taxes. 
Not to mention they just cut their dividend again last week, which only adds to the disappointment with this stock. With so many bad things going for Orchid Island, putting any money into this company is not worth it in my opinion. It's nothing more than a gamble, and I don't see this company recovering from their losses anytime soon. If I had to recommend an alternative to Orchid, I would have to say that Ready Capital Corporation, ticker symbol RC, would be a better pick. Again, its dividend doesn't come close to Orchid's, but it's a lot more stable than Orchid's, which keeps getting reduced almost every single year. And those are some of the high-yielding dividend stocks I see people discuss all the time that I really just don't care for. You obviously can have your own opinion, and if you've made money by entering at a good time with these stocks, then that's great. But these companies I personally won't be recommending anytime soon. Be sure to perform your own due diligence and research before investing into any company, and always diversify your investment portfolio, which helps reduce risk. Alright everyone, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If this video benefited you in any sort of way, please click the like button below and click subscribe if you want to see more dividend investing strategy videos. It would just let me know that there's a sizable enough audience out there who wants this kind of content and I'll continue to provide you all with that content. Alright everyone, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next time. Take care.